Um, we're going to go over how to control somebody once they're on the floor. Takedown is one option. Normal takedowns are designed to take the person down and disrupt their surroundings as far as their head may ricochet off the ground, they may break an ankle, they may fall back, try to plant their arm and dislocate an elbow. There's a lot of things that can happen in a takedown that ends up ending the fight. But more often than not, most takedowns do not result in injuries. We're not trying to make them result in injuries, so therefore, they usually don't. So once we get to the ground, we can decide what we're going to do with them. So the first method we're going to go over is once we get to the ground, we're going to go over the drag out method. So as John throws a punch at me, the first step is, once again, avoidance. Second step is some type of stun, wherever I can reach. Third step is go ahead and take control. Fourth step is I'm going to go ahead and take him on down and get him on the ground. Now, once I get him on the ground, I need to do something with his hand. Drag out is the best method. Now, for me to drag John out at this point, I would drag him actually off the camera. So I don't want to do that. So I'm going to back up for a second to right here. Now, I'm in the same position I was just in this second ago. The difference is the camera, the low camera, is going to be able to pick this up. I'm going to start dragging him out. Now, in the old days, I taught this grab a hold of the arm, go towards the head, and just keep pulling, 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 pulling. And that method does work. I have had people in my law enforcement career, as I try to do this, they will spin on their back like a turtle. And now I'm stuck. So for that reason, I'm going to maintain grip with my left hand. I'm going to roll my right hand to the back of the elbow. And I'm going to drag out. I'm going to combine leverage with the drag out method by doing that. Okay, from here, we're now going to change him all the way around here. Okay, from here, I'm going to roll and roll. This is going to allow me to now move in safely to him. I'm still in this position, so I should be yelling at him. Hand out, hand out, palm up, look away from my voice, cross your feet. I'm going to bring this right here and lock it in. This allows me to work. If I want to keep a hold of it, I can keep a hold of it too while I'm here. It's no big deal. Pull your arm out. Go ahead and try to twist it and move it out. It's going to be hard for him to move. See? So, this is just locked up here on my, my arm. And it gives me the ability here to work around him with a little bit of tension on his shoulder. So that's where I want to be. That's the drag out method that is doing that. So we're going to do that again. Do a little bit more speed. So we're going to grab my wrist. Outside lead. Notice that hand immediately went to the back of the elbow. Allows me to drag him out. And put him right where I want him. Cross your feet. Hand out. Pop up. Look away from my voice. One real important thing that I may not have mentioned before. If I get somebody down and I start giving them verbal commands to do something and they comply with me, I understand at that point that they realize that they're beat. So they're complying with me because they realize they got themselves into a bad situation and they don't want to make it any worse. If at any point they don't comply with one of my three commands, crossing your feet, hand out, palm up, or look away from my voice, the fight is still on. I don't want to go trying to grab the arm and trying to secure handcuffs and everything while the fight's still on. I need to control the arm in which I have or disengage. So don't be reaching for your handcuffs and taking one hand off of the arm and losing control until you know they're complying. It's a simple understanding. That when you say cross your feet, if they cross their feet, you say hand out, palm up, Hand comes out, palm comes up. You say, look away, they look away, they're complying. At that point is when you can go for your handcuffs. Do not try to get your handcuffs out and start applying them until you've achieved those three simple little commands. Now, the next stage we're going to move on to is leverage. Now, we added a little bit of leverage in the original drive.
drag out method, which was just dragging a person out. One of the things that I, I should have said in that method is always go to your head. Always go towards the person's head. Do not walk towards your feet trying to drag them out. The feet can tangle you up. They're a lot longer appendages and they will get you. So pull out on the arm and go around the head. That's very important to remember. So the next thing is, I, I get him down on the ground, same thing, I take him down outside of me, boom, he, he's on the ground. I know I have this drag out, go around his head, put this leverage, okay? But sometimes, I don't want to move around him, I want him to move around me. There just may be that case where I need him to move around me. The simple thing is, I want to take the arm as low as I can to the ground. I'm just going to reverse my grip from here to here. That's all I'm doing. I'm going to put my knee or my shin right here behind his arm, which is going to roll him, unless he wants a broken arm or dislocated arm, over onto his belly. Feet crossed, hand out, palm up, look away from my horse, now I move in, because now I can get my hand comes out. It's important to understand that. Once again, I'll take him down now this way, and get down on the ground, for the purpose of the camera, I roll, this comes across my shin, right behind the elbow, and I'm right in. Feet crossed, palm up, look away from my voice, and I'm good for my hand. I'm moving him around my location in leverage techniques versus me moving around his location in drag out techniques. So the difference is, if I'm moving around, it's going to be a drag out. If he's moving around, it's going to be a leverage technique. Simple way of understanding those two theories. Now we get to a very important theory called knees up. 90% of fights happen around alcohol. Because of that, I'm probably going to be in a bar setting. Could be Pizza Hut where they serve um, some type of alcohol beverage, beers. Could be in, you know, a restaurant like Logan's or, or one of these other fast food networks that are out there where they serve alcohol. But more than likely, there's glass around. And more than likely, the person I'm fighting is intoxicated and they've already dropped their glass. Or they broke their beer bottle off because that's what they're trying to stab me with. And part of it's on the ground. Why would I want my knees then to go down and get into that type of material? I wouldn't want to. I try to use the clock method to stay away from it as much as possible in our earlier segment. But just in case, as I take him down, I drag him out, move him to where I want him. I want my knees down on him. That's where I want my knees. Now, I'm still supporting my weight here. Okay? They're not jumping my weight on you, but not fully, right? Okay. So I hands out, hand out, palm up, crush feet, look away. Now he's cooperating, I can move. But my knees are not down on the ground. I don't want to see anybody doing this, trying to control somebody. You may have just stuck your patella tendon down in a bottle of beer that's been broken and slice your own patella tendon in half. Now the fight is over. He's going to get up and he's going to be able to re-engage you and you're going to have an injury. So we don't want to do that. Okay? Don't allow your knees to go down and touch the ground. Alright? This allows me to do what we call sprawling. And I can't sprawl if my knees are on the ground. If he starts to resist me, it's a common technique if I have him down on the ground. And he um, brings one foot out, and he props with his hand that he can roll up on me. We know that, okay? So what I need to do is when I start to see that happening, is I need to me out and sprawl on my weight onto him so he can't do it. I can't keep my feet out and sprawl if my knees are touching the ground. So remember that. I limit myself. Another reason I take it down. He starts to do the same thing. He's got that leg propped up. Great moment. He 
pops that hand up, my knees are here, as he starts to roll up, right? I can disengage the fourth segment of this quadrant. Okay? The fourth technique is to disengage. Now, if you notice, we've taught you in every segment to disengage. We don't want you to continue to reinforce failure. Get back to step one. That's what's going to happen. They're just going to repeat themselves. Well, we appreciate your time. We're glad you came out today and watched our video. And we hope that you enjoyed it and learned something from it. Um, stay tuned. There'll be more to come. Thank you. Taekwondo training, fellowship, and spirit. The U.S. National Taekwondo Association is your link to the traditional Taekwondo of Korea. We offer both national and world certifications. Our mission is to provide a fraternal organization for the promotion and preservation of Taekwondo as a martial art. We strive to service all needs of the traditional stylist from the highest level grandmaster to the beginner student. Enjoy the many benefits we offer. Grade and black belt certifications, instructor and master instructor courses, tournament insurance, success seminars, state, national, and international competitions, business support, martial arts supplies, monthly e-newsletter, and private training tours of Korea. Not only do we teach the best techniques, but Korean philosophy as well. We develop the complete mind, body, and spirit philosophy. Visit www.usnta.net to join today. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, I am Jim Hallwood. This is John Fish. We're with the National Self-Defense Agency. Um, we're both certified instructors that teach defensive tactics all over the world, nationally and internationally. And what we want to do today is bring to you guys um, a system in which you can use that don't dictate what punches, kicks, or strikes to throw, but dictates principle and philosophy of, of how to use the martial arts. So, we've already went all the way down to the ground in our last segment to take down. So now we're going to be in the fourth segment of this quadrant and we're going to be in control. So he's going to lay on down on the ground. And I have him in what we call control. Control basically means his hand is out, palm is up, foot is across, he's looking away from my voice, and I'm right here ready to start working anything else like handcuffs, uh, nod knot, a taser for a secondary person coming at me, my firearm should I need to if I'm being attacked by multiple people, but I'm in a position of total control and he is complying with me. Control means compliance. If he is not complying with me, I'm not in control yet. That's very important to understand that I am not in control if he's not complying. At no point in time should you ever fill out a witness statement or a use of force form or any type of paperwork saying, well, I got him down in control of the situation and then he continued to fight with me. No. When he is submitted, you are in a control position. Until that point, you're still in a dynamic attempt of a fight. So it's very important to remember that for words that you're going to put down on reports or paperwork later. So basically, I'll use the outside lead. And the first thing we're going to start with in the control section of taking somebody down is after the takedown, I'm going to get him an outside lead. And this is just to show you don't have to use outside lead. I, I can do any type of technique and take him to the ground. I can tackle him for that reason, take him to the ground. What I want to show you is once I get him to the ground, he's on his back. I need him over on his belly. I'm definitely not going to go down and try to control him in this situation. So, in the past, we've done a simple drag out, is this grabbing the arm, pulling all the way to the shoulder, and pulling and pulling until his shoulder rotates, and he comes around. Then we come in and tell him, cross your feet, hands out, palm up, head away, now I'm in control. That was the, the past how we would do that. Same technique again. I take him down. Now, I'm going to add leverage to it. Instead of just pulling, I'm going to put my hand behind his elbow. I'm going to still do the drag out method. Notice I'm going around his head, not where his feet are, where he can trip me, or I have to step over his body. Never step over a body or go over a body during combat. 
Now, I'm going to tell you, look away from my voice. Hand out, palm up, cross your feet. Now I'm going to move in to control. Okay, it's very important that we, we understand that theory. Because if I move in before he's there, I'm going to be in a lot of trouble. And I don't want to do that. So the next thing I have is what we call leverage or a lever bar. Now, in control, I went around him. In, in the drag out method, I went around him. In control, in leverage, he's going to go around me. That's the difference between the two. Am I moving or is he moving? So I'm taking down the same outside lead. He falls. There he is. Okay? I'm going to grab his wrist. I'm going to bring his elbow behind my leg. He went around me. Hand out. Palm up. Cross your feet. Look away from my voice. Now I'm in control. Once again, left hand. I take him down. He's here. Watch the method. I'm going to simply come here against my shin bone, right here behind his shoulder. He's moving. And now I'm stepping in. Hand out. Palm up. Look away from my voice. Cross your feet. And now I'm in position of control. Now, it's very important that we learn to do this. Okay? Hand out. Look away from my voice. Cross your feet. I'm going to put him back down again. He's all the way on the ground. Oh. He doesn't do any of that stuff. I think I'm going to move in and handcuff him. Okay? So I come in here. He props a leg. He rolls out from under me. He does all kind of things that does, doesn't work for me. That time he rolled inward, this time he's going to roll outward. All he's going to do is prop his leg up, push his arm, and roll right back out. Now he's trapped my leg, so if he rolls on over, he's probably going to break my leg. I've got to know that he's complying before I sink into a position. Okay, so it's very important to remember. Hands out, palm up, cross your feet, look away from my voice. Because if you're not going to go through that method, just go ahead and disengage and get away from it. Because I can tell you right now, the fight is still on. You may not perceive that it's still on. But remember, there's three things out there. There's what I perceive, there's what he perceives, and there's what I think he perceives. Okay, so that's a lot of different perceptions right there, if you ask me. I better be sure 100% I'm in control of this. Alright, so we get to the next step, is knees up. A lot of fights occur in a bar. A ball was busted, somebody dropped a glass, it breaks on the ground. Um, you have you know, different food um, organizations out there, restaurants that serve alcohol. Once again, most fights occur with just drunk people. 90% of attacks have been proven to occur at dim light situations, either early, early morning as the sun is rising or late, uh, right before it gets dark at night. So, or at night. So, I'm not really going to always see what's on the ground. So, what I don't want to do is put my knees down in an unknown source. I don't want a foundation under my knee of glass. I don't want a foundation underneath my knee of a big sharp rock. I don't want my foundation underneath my knee as being uh, 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 anything as far as a stick, a rock, a, a edge weapon or anything like that. I don't want to put my knee down on something that's not meant for my knee to be there. I'm going to end up cutting my patella tendon and I'm going to be out of the fight. So once I take the person down with outside leash, he hits the ground. I immediately start to drag out, but I'm using control with the leverage technique right here. I tell him, turn out, put your hand out, palm up, feet, cross your feet, keep looking away from my voice. As I move in here, my knees need to go down on him. I doubt that he has a broken glass in his back, but he may be laying on top of some broken glass. And I ain't gonna put my knees down and find out. So this is where I wanna be. Knees here. I'm not sitting all my weight on him and trying to crush him. What did I tell you earlier? You never go over the body. If I do that, I'm gonna lose balance. All he's gonna do is roll and he gets me out. I want to stay straight up and stay on this side of the spine. Never put your knees into the spinal line itself. 
Your shin should be propped across the floating ribs and across the shoulder. Okay? Form a good base to work from. If I have to, at that point, come back down. Fourth mechanism here. Don't want my knees down, right? But I also want to be able to, just in case, he starts to roll on me, to be able to disengage. I want to be able to disengage. He gets back up to his feet. He steps back. He throws a punch. I get offline. Distraction technique. Back to control. Back to takedown. I'm here takedown. I have to now do leverage. Get him rolled over. I'm right back there again. Cross your feet. Put your hand back out. Look away from my voice. Now I'm here. Okay, now I'm reassessing. Maybe he's had enough at this point. If he doesn't, he starts to get up again. I'm going to disengage again. That's why I'm on my feet and not my knees. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this, and we'll be back shortly with a, a conclusion to the entire um, four square. And um, we hope you have a great day. Thank you.